The Shed Show is proudly brought to you by McMatt's, the cost-effective, environmentally friendly solution for your shed floor. G'day, Whiskers here, and welcome to The Shed Show. Coming up today... Russ gives us the tip on decking out a shed. We jump on the tram to Roberto's tiny shed of conservation and conversation. Rachel reveals her shed of treasures, and it's a wrap. The Whiskey Lizards party big time in our final shed session for Series 1. Stack the fridge, strap yourself in, and let's go. Here's a Shed Show tip. If you want to deck out your shed... Head to the tip. G'day Russ. G'day Whiskers, how you going mate? And the man with the tips on decking out the shed. Got a couple, one let's, or two. Let's go and have a look. Come on in oh, mate. Oh wow. I'll just get some lights out. Look at this. Now most of the items in this shed have been recycled from the local tip. G'day Russ. How you going mate? Good to see you once again. Good to see you Whiskers. But there is a formula and a method to your madness, isn't there? There's a, uh, I, I do attend the tip quite often, but I also attend uh, op shops and garage sales and many other, anywhere I think I can obtain something for the shed, mate. So I kind of started Whiskers uh, with collecting local, then, um, so local is in the town, local as in the area, then Australiana, and you know, even the odd thing or two from overseas now, mate. Well, I reckon we better, can you take us on a bit of a tour of the shed and uh, yeah, perhaps pick out a few of your favourite items? Cool. Russ, there's not a square to spare. She's pretty chocker in the shed, but these are a few of your favourite items that you've collected over the years. You better run us through a few, mate. I've got a couple of things here that I've accumulated over time, Whiskers. One of this, this one here is uh, the Women's Weekly, 1975, January 15. Uh, Cyclone Tracy, when it hit Darwin, mate. And I picked that up from a garage sale locally. A Atari 2600 uh, Double Dragon, mate. New in the packaging. Um, what, has never been opened? Never been opened, mate. Where did you find that? I was given it by a very good friend. Got this one. This one's a, a pride piece, mate. Uh, the old Chips motorcycle, oh, the I TV motorcycle show. Pop. I remember Chips. Yeah, mate. I picked this one up at a flea market in Belgium just recently. I think oh, I paid really? a couple of bucks, mate. I was very happy. Still got the uh, the plug top there, mate. It's never been hung on the rack. All right, and you've got a horn for your bike too. Uh, yeah, this is a funny story, this one. Uh, made in Czechoslovakia. I bought this at a flea market in Belgium and I just bought a bicycle and I thought, oh, I want a, I want a neat looking uh, bell for the bike. I thought, oh, I'll get that horn and it wasn't until I kind of was committed to buying it that I realised it's actually a breast pump. But uh, by that stage I had to go through with it. The old uh, smash up derby cars that you used oh, to put I the ripcord into, this. mate. Oh. A bit of stuff in that one. I haven't unpacked that one. Okay, yeah. But this There's something in there that, um, you know what I mean? Comes no, no, no. Might be interested in. Should be right, mate. So these are the old, uh, the old plastic uh, smash-up derby cars. Oh, what, what vintage would they be? Uh, these are about the seventies, maybe mid seventies. I'm guessing. I don't know how we're going to squeeze all this in, but got a few more favourite items you can uh, show us. There are a few, mate. That I, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go for a wander and I'll show you. Let's have a squeeze. Sweet, mate. Check this beauty out, Whiskers. Star Wars. I got this one at the local tip, mate. I, uh, I was stunned when I saw this one in an old filing cabinet, opened the door up, and uh, Star Wars Return of the Jedi uh, erasers, unplugged at the top, mate. Um, 1983 era. You Jedi, you. Russ, is this is a bit like sensory overload here in your shed. There's so many things to see and look at, but you've brought me here to this suitcase. Why? I just want to show you this, uh, this set of team jumpers here, uh, uh, Whiskers. Um, uh, Shepherd and Lemnos Football Club fourths in about the 70s. It's the full team set and it, they were going to be discarded after the fourths folded and went just to the seniors, seconds and thirds. So I don't know whether we can get down here, but you've got uh, Skippy the Bush Kangaroo book up the back there as well. I got uh, also got Skippy the uh, the bread and butter plate there, and I got a little bit of other Skippy gear around the shed here, mate. 
Russ, you certainly do like collecting the old uh, board games and what have you, the Etch-a-Sketcher. Yeah, mate, I, uh, I love the graphics on them and the artwork. It's, it's just, and especially if they got something that you remember were from when you were a child and, you know, it's like we've got the old Dukes of Hazard there, we've got Skippy up on the wall. You did have another Skippy. I did, I told you I had another Skippy there, mate. The Skippy board game. An etch a sketch in the box, mate. I, I couldn't get that one out of the op shop quick enough, mate. Oh, Whiskers, I've got to show you this one, mate. Buck Rogers here. Um, bit of a funny story. We had that one since we were a kid and he was kind of the soft squishy model so this is at a time when Gumby uh, was around yeah Gumby was around and you know the hard action figure was coming out so we never actually opened him because he was just crappy and uh, so we we left him in package and I found him a few years ago and he's a pride of place above the bar now mate well it's good to see that someone still gives a buck cheers Russ cheers, thank you very much for inviting us in I know you've also got some Tucker over there Got a couple of 4 and 20 pies in the pie warmer. And that's fairly new, is it, that pie warmer? Uh, new is relative. It's been recently rescued from... Uh, Where's it been rescued from, Russ? Tell the viewers. From uh, a scrapyard tip. <laughs> but it's thoroughly clean. I hope so. Well, let's try one. Oh, beautiful and warm too, Russ. Thank you very much. No pie in the sky stuff here. This is where dreams come true at Russ's Shed. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. The Shed Show. Shed Show. Come on. Welcome back to Sheddigat and uh, H, I believe you've had some correspondence from the Shed Show Facebook site. That's right. Look, we've got a letter here, Whiskers, from um, someone called Wing Buzzard in Harrietville. Do you think now, that's their real name, H? Oh, I don't think so. And anyway, unless their parents were having a bit of fun with them, I don't Hello, know. Mr and Mrs Buzzard. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's, it, this says, I'm having a few uh, mates around to watch the Moto GP in my shed and he wants something that is easy and tasty to cook. So we've come up with a plan here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do some garlic prawns in the sandwich press. Really, really simple. It doesn't get any easier than this. So I don't need a uh, license to drive this at all, do I have? Absolutely not. What we've done, a little bit of cracked pepper, tiny bit of fresh garlic. We've got some good Australian olive oil. We've just lightly coated our prawn tails. I've got some good Australian School prawns here that I've just... Um, Educated, obviously. Ob obviously, uh, that we've coated in the olive oil. So where do we go from here, H? Bang them on there. Just throw them on, nothing throw, touched with the human throw, hands. Throw them on like you're not paying for them, mate. Okay, well I'm not. It's in the shed. Oh, listen to that sizzle. <laughs> just spread them out slightly. Spread them out. Fantastic. Uh, that's, that's, all, that's all good whistles. Throw the lid down, mate. Oh, even a bit more of a sizzle. These will only be less than a minute. All right then, now listen. Thank you very much for being a part of uh, the Shed Show in Series 1. Pleasure. And a bit of Shed -ikit. Now, over summertime, before next series, we'd like to invite a few of the viewers to uh, send in their tips. Send in their recipes, tips, something easy we can cook in the Shed. And we, we can do it here and we can uh, explain them and uh, experience them in Shed -ikit. Absolutely. Looking forward to tasting these two, mate. Mm, they won't be long. OK. Whisker, I reckon we're nearly ready. Oh, they're jumping out of their shells. Fantastic. Now, that, how long did that take? A minute? A minute at least. A minute. Let's let's get these bad boys in our uh, sports uh, primary cover. Yeah. Now have, have a look at that whisker. They are looking superb, H. Fantastic. Ooh. Now I reckon they're ready to go. I'm going to try one. Okay. And look at these little bad boys. They even come with their own handle. Absolutely magnificent. H, you're a whiz in the shed, aren't you? Garlic prawns on the sandwich press in a couple of minutes. Too easy. We'll see you next time in Shedicate. Cheers. Cheers. The Shed Show. The Shed Show. Come on. If you want to be looking shed sharp, make sure you get to the website and pick up some Shed Show merch. After the break, do you remember Roberto? We squeeze back into his tiny shed full of yarns and Australian native animals to find out how the Connie for Conservation is taking a tram and his message to the world. And Rachel reveals her shed of backyard treasures. It's worth a peek. Back soon. Shed show, the shed show. Come on. The shed show, the shed show. Come on. Roberto is a former Melbourne tram conductor who runs performance troupe Connie's for Conservation who are doing their bit to save the planet all from his tiny backyard shed in inner city Melbourne. The Connie's, of course conductors or Connie's as we like to call them, they're a much loved part of uh, our culture. What is the Connie's nowadays though? 
we're an outdoors performance troupe, a bit like buskers gather people yeah. around, boom, boom, boom. Well, you're always good at telling a yarn. Love telling a yarn, Bruce, love telling a yarn. Connie's for Conservation really do have a novel way of educating not just kids but everyone about our environment. I've got a bush regeneration land care background so when we got knocked off the trams we decided to mix together yarning and gathering people and what we did in trams and tickets coming out of the conductor's I notice bag. you still wear the uniform, looking good too. Love wearing the uniform. <laughs> but you do have uh, some unique cards that you've created about the environment. What we've done is we basically stock our bag with flora and fauna cards, so frogs, lizards, marsupials, woodland, wetland birds, yep. and a lot of the brief is endangered species, so we might be doing things like growling grass frogs if we're in the north of Melbourne, we might talk about platypus if we're in the Yarra River, up around the Mullum Mullum Creek. We've sort of got a geographical handle on the city. One of my favourites is the Eastern Bark Bandicoot. I've spent a bit of time in Hamilton and there was a little population that was surprisingly found in the 1980s, thought to be extinct. It's such a nice story of something that's almost gone, being helped by people, taken to zoos, captive bred up, and populations of this beautiful little omnivore that's got a pouch that breeds quite quickly um, back in Mount Rothwell near the Yu Yangs and now up near the airport at Tullamarine in the Woodlands Historic Park. I know you notice you do have a, a big emphasis on the waterways as well and the way that we, the people, affect our waterways which in turn affects our native species. Well, you know, we've, um, we're really on to the stormwater thing and a lot of the organisations that we work with uh, have a brief about pollution into wetlands and there's a lot of concentration on keeping the Merry Creek or the Corroid or the Yarra or the Maribyrnong in good shape so Port Phillip Bay is in good shape because whatever happens on land affects the sea as well. Trams are neutralising things, but you know, the people just about across the board love the natural world. Now Roberto, I notice your time in the Connies, you've obviously um, got some memorabilia as well. What's this on the wall here I can see in the back of your uh, depot? The South Melbourne Depot Canvas Tram Destination Roll. So you remember um, on the top we used to go into the back cabin, the drivers had changed the Oh, they rolled them. Rolled them through. So there's a canvas destination roll. There's a bit of Calcutta next door with the Rudger Budger last car to BBB Bard. We've collected things over time. Love the conductor's bags, beautifully made at the Preston Tram workshops. And, uh, you know, we've even got a mob of old tickets. So it's beautiful at times to pull off a ticket for people and reenact what a tram conductor did. Collect fares, sell tickets, um, look after people, give directions, help with prams, keep graffiti and a little bit of the argy bargy under control, and for many, entertain as well. Now listen, you haven't got a ticket there for the number 69 back to Shed Show HQ, have you? You could get away with this 50 cent. Look, I'll just give you a little bit of an extra distance in it and we'll give you a 10 section rise, Whiskers. Thank you very much. I better hurry, it's about to leave. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Oh, I can hear the bell. Ding, ding. ding. <laughs> shed Shorts, tips for a better shed. Tim, I knew you were a good bloke, mate. Max Carpets not only save you money, but you also save the environment. That's true, mate. So many mobs, very large companies throw these out into the landfill. Now everything has to be recycled because they do not decompose. So when you come down to McMatts and, and get these carpet tiles, you're saving the environment. What do you estimate how many millions of tonnes of CO gases have you saved the environment? There's about 20 kilos for every four square metres. We've sold multiple but we've sold 40 foot container loads over and over and over, so millions, millions of tonnes. So that's why it's best to recycle them, put them back on your floor. So you mean we're saving money and the environment at the same time? Yeah, spot on, mate. I like spot you, Tim. On. This is a great idea. Talk to Max Carpets today about saving us money and the planet. No worries, mate. Today we meet Rachel and her shed of treasures. Rachel is a single mum doing her best to raise two teenage boys one with his own challenges, while still chasing her dreams from a backyard shed. G'day, Rach. How you going, dear? Hi, Good to see you. you. <laughs> Show me around. Rach, your shed of treasures is a bit like a, an op shop come uh, second-hand collectible store. Of course, young Jazz down here helps you out. Where have you sourced all these things? 
Um, yeah, just op shops and a lot of shopping over the years. <laughs> so I've had it all like in boxes and stuff and inside the house. You're into restoration and interior design, you were telling me? Yep. And yep. you hope to make a career of it or do you want to keep it in the shed, a bit of a cottage industry? I prefer it this way because the kids need me here at home. If I had a shop down the street, it would be a lot harder. I wouldn't be able to be in my shed. Something was missing. And yeah, I got inspired by a, a girl who I went around to buy a print off her and I'm like, I'm going home, I'm going to do that. And it, overnight I did it. I notice your shed has a bit of a split personality. You've got your display area here, which is a bit like your shop front. Yeah. And also you've got the work shop next door. What sort of things do you do in there? Um, I pretty much just, if something needs pulling apart, I'll, you know, pull it apart, sand it all back. Jovi likes to do the undercoating. <laughs> he goes, can I just paint that? I go, yeah, you can do the undercoat and I'll do the top coat. <laughs> I think you're setting a good example for the kids too. They can see mum works pretty hard. That's it. And yeah. doing something she loves. You've got to follow your heart, eh? Hey? Yep, that's it. I love it. Hi, Rachel. Hi. You've had a few people dropping in while we've been here, actually. So it's a bit like a bit of a shop. People just pop in now and then and they buy some items off you, do they? Yeah, yep, yep. They check first. Um, they inbox me and just check whether, when I'm going to be home and make a bit of a time. People feel more comfortable like coming around, like it just doesn't end when I hand over, you know, the, the piece that they, they're interested in, it just doesn't end there, like they'll send me pictures when they get home, you know, and I'll follow up as well. Well this way <laughs> you can combine your hobbies and your family and keep them together and yeah. also a nice little business at the same time. That's it, I used to hate it when people said you can't have your cake and eat it. I've got my cake and I'm eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Rachel. Yeah. I'm proud of you. We're going to have a bit of a look around. Is that okay? Yeah, awesome. Check yeah, out I... a few of the Nicky Nackies. I might have to buy some of these Actually things. Actually bought your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, Neil takes us on a journey through Australia's history via his magnificent shrine to the sheds of the past. And it's a wrap party at Shed Quarters for our final shed session. Get ready to shake the shed and your booty. Don't go away. Shed show. Shed show. Come on. Now, those of you who are regular viewers to The Shed Show will remember Neil from the great Aussie beer shed, but you've built another shed and it's a brand new passion. It is. This one is uh, called the Heritage Function Centre. Uh, we do birthdays, weddings, engagements and Christmas parties. We're just starting to get known and uh, it's been pretty popular. Weddings, parties, anything, but you do have a new passion too. I do, you know, if you're a collector, you've got to be a collector. So we've built a Heritage Farm Museum, which has got a blacksmith's workshop, shearing shed, milking shed, saddlery, and an old kitchen. All genuine Aussie stuff, that's our rules here. And in the last 12 months, I've started to buy horse-drawn carriages, and only this week I've picked up a Cobb & Co coach. Well, we better go and have a look at it. Come with us. Neil, so many sheds here at the Heritage Farm and Museum, but this is your latest addition. It is. Uh, I only had this for uh, two to three days. Two um, to three days? Only, yeah. And I noticed Dab & Co. I thought it was a Cobb & Co. No, I've Googled that up. Uh, it was an English firm which came to Australia. And this actual cart ran between Kyneton and Heathcote a hundred years ago for the Royal Mail. That's a good museum piece, as is. I don't want to restore it because it's, uh, it's perfect, as is. It looks magnificent, doesn't it? Yeah. Dab & Co. Yeah. The Royal Mail. That's it. Now, Neil, I think we'd better forge your head with the shed tour. Ah, forge your head, that's good. <laughs> so here we are in the blacksmith shed. Yes. And um, I'm seeing a Roadrunner theme here. <laughs> you know, Roadrunner, the big anvil. That is a huge anvil. That is a big anvil. We had to actually get that uh, craned in here. That weighs an absolute ton. Unbelievable. You had that craned in here to the shed? Yeah. I could live in here too. You've recreated an old kitchen. This is great. This is, and down here, these old stoves, they. Is that a chuka it is stamped made, on there? It is. It's uh, made by W.W. W. Moore in a chuka. They'll be 100 years old. Um, beautiful old staves. Um, and they're local. And uh, the old Cool Guardy safe over here, that's a really big one. So that's just a beautiful piece of Australian history. And then this is just exactly how it used to be in the old days. And uh, um, got your hooks and you have your fire down there. Uh, the Gunbauer butter factory up there. That's a butter um, pound making machine there to, to make the pounds of butter. Um, that's all how it was, you know, 100 years ago. Now, Neil, it wouldn't have been an Australian Heritage Museum without a shearing shed. 100%. And look at that barbed wire. I can't take my eyes off it. It's over 100 years old, that barbed wire. 
Um, I've actually got a barbed wire collection too, and they're all identified. And the, all the Australian barbed wires were named after the person who invented them. And I've got probably 20 different barbed wires in the museum with, with their named, and they tell you the date, and uh, that's over 100 years old. We've got the old stencils, and uh, I just go to clearing sales and um, buy stuff, and away we go. But uh, this one here is a beauty because we've even recreated the floor with the slats so that uh, when they did their droppings and that, they just go straight through. That's just like it was in a shearing shed in the old days. Now, Neil, you'll notice that I've been milking this theme of the shed. You have been. <laughs> the milking shed. It is the milking <laughs> shed. So whereabouts did you uh, accumulate all this uh, dairy equipment? Um, well, most came from the Golden Cow Complex, which was a tourist uh, attraction in Tongala. Unfortunately, they closed down, so I picked a lot of this up at the sale. One man's loss is another man's gain. Now, the last time we were here visiting the Great Aussie Beer Shed, we had a quick glimpse of the Furfy uh, water carts. Now, you told me you had a great collection. Is it still here? It definitely is. I've got uh, a number of different water carts from different companies as well. There's nearly a full set of Furfy carts and also inclusive of the other makers, which was uh, Coxon's in Namurka, Lawton's from Albury Wodonga and uh, Close from Finlay. Once again, Neil, thank you very much for inviting me to the Heritage Farm Museum here in Echuca. My pleasure. And we're finishing off out here outside the water carts, of course. Now, Furfy, after my own heart, from Shepparton. What does it say on there again? They've got their own saying, the company slogan, good, better, best, never let it rest. Till your good is better, and your better, best. Well, I reckon that just about sums up this place. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Neil. And the Shed Show too. Cheers. Shed Show, the Shed Show. Come on. If you want to be part of the Shed Show team, make sure you follow us on social media. Or you can check us out on the website, theshedshow.com.au. Shed Show. Yes, and we will have to slow down. That just about takes us out for the Shed Show for Series 1. Thank you very much for everyone who's been involved. Thank you very much, Gladdy, for all the music. 
Thank you very much to Kruy behind the camera for all your work, mate. Not just working the camera, all the editing and all the other stuff that goes with it. A big thank you to everyone who invited us into their sheds and made us feel so at home. Thank you very much. You can't beat the shed, can you? Thanks, everyone, for following us on Facebook. Make sure you keep on shedding the love on social media. We'll be uploading stories over the summer. And once again, thank you to you for watching the show, The Shed Show. We appreciate it. Make sure you keep shedding on. We'll talk to you real soon. Cheers. The Shed Show. The Shed Show is brought to you by these loving people. If you'd like to sponsor the show and shed the love, get in touch today. Cheers.